Hello and uh, welcome for this uh, new release of uh, Zen Orchestra 5.88. And uh, this month has been crazy busy. Um, and really, when I wrote that blog post about this release, it was like a pretty huge one. And I was kind of surprised the, the amount of content we have for, for this October release. And we'll start first now as a kind of a new habit to first review, uh, let's say, the whole project and community around Zen Orchestra, which is uh, really important because it's really the, the core of the project is not just the code, but people around it. So let's start with multiple events where um, the part of our team will talk and, uh, and you know, help you to discover interesting topics. The first one is the uh, SFSCon uh, 2023. Um, which is a pretty important open source uh, conference in Italy, in Bolzano. And uh, this time, uh, Charles, our chief strategy officer, will make a talk uh, about, uh, let's say, the uh, open digital infrastructure and how crucial it is uh, if we want to keep control on our future. So uh, it speci specifically, let's say, resonates with the fact of, uh, you know, digital sovereignty and so on. So if you are around in Italy and you want to, to keep an eye on that, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, and meet Charles. This event is planned on November the 10th and the 11th. So uh, feel free to uh, take a look uh, if you want to uh, to talk with Charles and uh, and meet him. The next event is the Cloud Stack Collaboration Conference, which is also in November, but the 23rd and 24th. And uh, this time it's uh, all about the uh, Cloud Stack project, which is a project that could run on top of XCPNG. Um, and Zen Orchestra, obviously, and uh, we'll have multiple talks. Uh, first, I will do a workshop on explaining how, with concrete blocks, to build your own private cloud based on Zen Orchestra, XCPNG, and obviously Cloud Stack. Um, also, uh, Charles will do a talk about uh, open source uh, with a really interesting talk focused on the evolution of uh, you know, the open source movement. And finally, Andre will have um, a dedicated session to talk about the uh, data processing units, uh, the DPUs, and how we could, you know, uh, let's say, accelerate your storage and your network directly inside the XCPNG platform. So uh, if you could uh, be uh, around, it's in Paris, by the way. So uh, if you're around in that time, feel free to, uh, to take a look. Let's move on on various uh, events or things related to the projects. Uh, in this specific uh, thing, we made some, let's say, uh, improvement or kind of rewrites on some stuff that sounds uh, maybe minor, but I think it's really important. Um, when you go on the Zen Orchestra uh, uh, repository on GitHub, uh, you will have a very, very decent readme file, which is a lot better than the previous one. And this is really useful because some people are discovering the project directly from GitHub and not from zenorchestra.com. So for those users, uh, you could see the difference between the previous uh, readme file and the new one. I think it's a lot better. We did the same for the XCPNG project and the Vates organization on GitHub. Um, and I think it's uh, really, uh, if you are discovering the project from there, uh, it's a lot more attractive to, to try it. So it's an important thing that we had to do. Regarding the EXO team uh, itself, uh, we are pleased to uh, welcome Melissa uh, in, the, in our team. And uh, she's not uh, the last one that will join us because in the next month, uh, we have two more developers that will reinforce the team. So we'll be really happy to see that um, all those you know, new developers will help to, to move faster on building uh, Zen Orchestra, Exolite, Exo6, and so on. So it's really important. And uh, we are really pleased to, to tell you that it's really going into the right direction uh, with the team. Another, uh, let's say, uh, I wouldn't say funny, but an interesting thing with the community uh, is an investigation we made on a bug reported by the community on a Netbox plugin that is used to synchronize uh, the um, Zen Orchestra to Netbox. And so for that, um, we had an issue and it was weird because we couldn't reproduce the problem because we were using uh, a very recent version on Netbox. And... Um, if you want, go, go ahead and take a look at the thread because it's really interesting to find it, how the interaction we had between the developers and the users, the, the home labbers and so on, really helped us to, to find the problem, to build a workaround. And that's, to me, a, a real demonstration that 
we are working very well with our community, listening to them and even you know chasing bugs with them. So the result is problem fixed in the end for this release. Also, uh, we welcome a new external contribution, which is frankly not really that easy when you have a such a complex project like Zen Orchestra. Uh, and uh, so that's why we, uh, we welcome uh, Malcolm Scott, who uh, did a, a cool, interesting feature, not that hard, but still something we wouldn't have done if uh, nobody pushed for it. Uh, we'll talk about it. It's uh, regarding uh, preserving the current page if you re-log or re-out. So it's, uh, it's a nice feature and we thank external contributors who have their you know, own priorities, point of view, and helping us to you know, accelerate some parts of it, some parts of the development of Zen Orchestra. Let's move on on the technical aspects of uh, this release. And as you can imagine, uh, there's many, many of them. Uh, let's start with the backup, with the kind of the traditional, uh, let's say, uh, first topic we open uh, with our Zen Orchestra release. It's not that huge, but still it's pretty important. We considerably, uh, let's say, uh, improve the way we are doing backup with S3, especially the full backup, so the very large XVS file. And those files uh, could have some issues when they are uploaded to your S3 provider. And so it helps a lot uh, to get more error messages to work with them, but also reduce the memory consumption because we are now able to split the files into smaller chunks, even for those large XVAs. So uh, this improvement is very welcome for people using uh, the full backups uh, toward any kind of S3 uh, backup provider. Let's move on to Terraform. So as you know, uh, since now maybe two years already, uh, we are working on Terraform plugin that is connected directly to the Zen Orchestra API. Uh, there's a new release of uh, this uh, provider uh, providing uh, the support of the bonded LACP network, but also many other options we have in Zen Orchestra if you're interested. Uh, the change log is linked uh, in the blog posts. Uh, there's you have all the details. Feel free to test it. Uh, we got a, a pretty nice community right now around the Terraform provider. So it's uh, impressive to see that there's many people who want to do infrastructure as code on top of Zen Orchestra and XCPNG. So uh, it's very cool to see that moving forward pretty fast. Let's switch to uh, now Exolite. Um, so Exolite, as you know, is the lightweight interface that will be integrated that is already integrated in XCPNG 8.3 um, that allows you to make some basic management stuff. And for uh, this stuff, this uh, month, we have uh, new features exposed directly into the UI, like you can make a snapshot, you can make a VM copy, and which is also really, really important if you have Windows machines. Now you have a new toolbar for the console, and this toolbar allows you to uh, open the console in the new tab, so that's not new, going to full screen, but also sending the control alt del key so you can log in on your Windows guest, which wasn't possible before. So sorry for the Windows lover here. That's at least uh, fixed now. So you can uh, finally do it. We also made various uh, improvements in the UI. Uh, feel free to test it on xcpj.3. It's uh, already there and usable. So that's it for uh, Exolite. And again, uh, feel free to test it uh, if you want to explore it and to give some feedback. There is a dedicate, uh, dedicated category on our forum, so uh, go ahead. Let's move on to Zen Orchestra 6. So a lot of you are expecting uh, progress and I see uh, at least visible progress on it. So on the, let's say, technical point of view, we are doing uh, interesting progress to, uh, to be able to have the first bootstrap environment with it, uh, but it still kind of requires a lot of invisible work to uh, to make it real. But in the meantime, we are also in parallel working on the new mockups. So it takes also a lot of time because those mockups are to be uh, really think uh, a lot. Uh, so that's why it takes some time. But in the end, um, those screenshots are pretty nice. And we decided to focus on the backup aspects. So basically, that's where the gap is really uh, huge between the existing version and what we want to achieve. So that's why those backup views will be the first that will be exposed in the first release of XO6. Uh, as a reminder, it, it will be at some point available in your XOA URL slash uh, 6 or V6 or something like this. We will let you know, but uh, we are doing really nice progress with the mockups, which is truly important and takes, again, a lot of time, uh, but still, uh, 
I will let you judge about it. There's really nice ideas on how to deal with your backups, to regroup them and so on. So feel free to take a deeper look uh, in the blog post to, uh, to see exactly what it is about. Let's move on to Exostore. So as you know, Exostore is the hyperconverged solution uh, based on top of a Lin store from Linbit. And uh, this month, we are proud to um, release the first UI to create your Exostore uh, system. Um, so it's still in beta. We still have some bugs, but at least now you can try to install it. It was rather complex to build, but in the end it works. And so what we hope is that more users will try it, test it. Uh, obviously, it's better not to try it on your production uh, because it's not finished, entirely finished yet. At least it works, but there's some bugs. But anyway, you could try it really easily with the UI and give your feedback on a dedicated section uh, on the front. So let's move on on the uh, XCP ng 8.3 features. So we had a, this time, for the first time, a dedicated category in our release blog post because those features exposed in Zen Orchestra are only working for XCP ng 8.3, which is already available in beta one. Uh, we hope that we have a full release before the end of the year, we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, in terms of new features for that, we now expose the VTPM management in the UI, so VTPM is required to run Windows 11, and uh, the Zen server team uh, worked to deliver something. And so what we did is to integrate their changes and review them and embed a solution in the UI to manage it. So keep in mind, this is um, a kind of pre-version of VTPM. It will work. Your Windows 11 will boot with it, no problem. But you won't be able to live migrate yet or to do snapshots. So keep that in mind. It's not production ready, but still pretty easy to use now inside the UI. So that's a good way to enjoy your preview features and make your tests. The next aspect that is related to XCPG 8.3 is uh, a specific features of the Zappy, the tool stack of XCPG and Zen server called uh, host.evacuate. This is called by Zen Orchestra when you put a host in maintenance mode or when you use rolling pull updates. Uh, the problem with this is it's, uh, let's say, migrating uh, en masse many, 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 many VMs at once, like 10 at once. And this can cause issue for people having, let's say, very busy storage or very busy CPUs and so on. When you migrate VMs 10 by 10 in that context, you might have uh, VM posed for a bit longer than if you just migrate them three by three and so on. So what we did is first modify the Zappy code. So we contributed upstream like we are now used to do. And by the way, great work for the Zappy team on the Zen server side. It's always a pleasure to work with them. Uh, the PR was merged pretty fast. And then in Zen Orchestra, we um, use that modification, which is just add an extra parameter as an option to say, OK, if uh, I give an extra parameter, this is the number, the concurrency number. And if you don't pass it, then it will be still 10 by 10. But now by default in Zen Orchestra, we'll always pass 3. So evacuate will go 3 by 3, which is a kind of a right balance between performances and time to, uh, let's say, evacuate a host. So. Um, this is a good demonstration that we could collaborate and make a feature from, you know, the back end to the front end through the Zappy up to the Exo web interface. Okay, let's move to the last section, uh, which we call MISC because there's many, many different uh, small improvements. But uh, as you can see, it's already a lot for release, but still there is a uh, few extra nice features. So the first one is the external contribution feature, which is really, really nice. Uh, when your you know, um, authentication expires, previously uh, you had to you go back to the login page and then go back to the home page. But if you were somewhere else, then you just lost track of what you were doing. And now this is more, uh, it's a lot smarter. Uh, if you are delogged, then you will be logged and then going back to where you were before. So uh, pretty easy. And the same thing for restarting X server, it will you know, send you back to where you were browsing in Exo Web before. So uh, a really good, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a feature that is not that much, but, you know, quality of life stuff. Uh, for Netbox, uh, well, that's the investigation we had. So in very short, now problem fixed. Uh, even if you run on an old version of Netbox, 
uh, the synchronization will work. But keep in mind, that's great to keep uh, Zen Orchestra and Netbox up to date to avoid those kind of uh, issues. So now synchronization is uh, working back perfectly. Uh, maybe you weren't affected by that because it's only a specific version, like three releases only of Netbox that were affected, which is not a lot because they are releasing really often, like, I don't know, four, four times a month, something like this. The next quality of life improvement is showing a network name uh, in a physical interface, which is really uh, helpful when you create a network and so on. So you are now more aware about which physical interface you are dealing with uh, at zero, one, and so on. So again, it's quality of life and helps people to get sure that they are doing something that makes sense with the hardware. So uh, it's small, but in terms of quality, pretty high. Um, another cool improvement for our source users, so people using um, Zen Orchestra when doing a git pull, yarn, yarn build, and so on. Um, now we are able to check directly in the about section if you are up to date with the master branch. Uh, that's mostly because people tend to forget about uh, updating it manually with git pull, and so they're using an old version and often reporting bugs that are already fixed. So to limit that, now the commit number is clearly uh, displayed in about and the one from the head, so the last uh, master commit. And so you have a, a, a green check if you are fully up to date. So if you are not, there's a warning message and you know first you need to update and then try again. So that's uh, probably reduced the load on the forums we have to remind people to do it in the first place. Uh, then let's switch to uh, the self-service improvements. Um, if you are using it and you have many VMs created by users, maybe you don't know how many VMs are created by one self-service, one resource set, but also what are those VMs to find them. And so we added a small URL with the number and the link. And if you click on that link, you will go to the homepage filtering exactly those VMs used in this resource set. So it's very handy, especially if you delegate VM creation to many users in many resource sets. So as an admin, um, you could now have this kind of overview in just one click or just you know seeing the number of VMs that are inside it. And the last two things we did for this release, uh, it's a, almost a never ending uh, a blog post. Um, we made many improvements on the way we display VDIs in the health and the dashboard, especially for VDIs that has to call us or VDI that are our fund. Our fund mean not linked to any virtual machine. Um, by doing this, it's really helpful when you have storage issues. Uh, now you will have more accurate information, uh, but also removing the, let's say, useless false alarms that we could have with kind of special devices we had before. So uh, it's more accurate content and removing something that is not relevant. So that's really helpful for the admin to find any problem on the storage parts of the infrastructure. And, <clears throat> and finally, uh, the improvement regarding the token management. So uh, as you may know, you could generate token through the UI, through the CLI and so on. But the way we managed token previously was kind of generating an excessive number of tokens. And since the, this revision that we are delivering uh, for this release, now it's only displaying the token you created and who is using the token. And that's you know uh, a lot more clear to analyze if you want to see you know the existing token and who is doing what, basically, uh, in very short. So uh, that's a lot more powerful, uh, less confusing than before. And again, that's a, a huge quality of life improvement for the admin to understand more what's going on in their infrastructure through Zen Orchestra. And that's it. Uh, as you can see, it was a pretty large release. Um, so by the way, as you may uh, notice, we recorded this uh, you know, announcement, uh, mostly because I'm uh, traveling uh, uh, in the, the next days uh, when the release will be done. So that's why we used the opportunity to record it before. Um, anyway, uh, it's a pretty large one. Feel free to provide feedback on the forum. And thank you for watching. And uh, see you next month. Bye-bye.